Hi everybody, welcome back, and um, I'm here to share with you my thoughts on a movie I just revisited that I'd seen before, but not in a long, long time. It is a movie that's bad. It is so bad. How bad is it? So bad that it's good, really good in that regard. And you have to see it to believe it. It's one of those old pictures. It's called The Brain That Wouldn't Die. Uh, this movie wasn't released in the United States until 1962, but it was filmed in just 13 days in 1959 around Tarrytown, New York. So this movie, as far as I'm concerned, is a 50s film at the end of the 50s. Um, but it's uh, just what you'd expect from this type of affair, okay? Uh, this movie originally was going to be called The Head That Wouldn't Die, Change to Brain. And I think a more appropriate title, as I'll get into, would have been The Brain That Couldn't Die. Because uh, it's not a matter of will, this, this brain wants to die. And I'll get into that. All right, now, directed by Joseph Green for a tiny budget of, well, two things he said. Once he said it was $62,000. And then later on he said, no, it was more like uh, one hundred twenty-six dollars to $150,000. Uh, I don't know what which is true. It sure looks like sixty-two thousand. Uh, very cheaply made, very much cutting corners, having to simulate stuff, uh, you know, artificially off camera, having to cut things a certain way. But uh, it doesn't disappoint if you're a fan of trashy movies and sleazy films. All right, so let's um, talk about what it is. First of all, we have a doctor in the film, played by. Uh, Herb Evers. It was Herb's first film. Later on, he would be known as Jason Evers. And uh, I wonder sometimes uh, if he changed his name because of this movie, which was his first, you know, and maybe he was really disgraced by it. I don't know. By the way, I was able to get an autograph from Jason Evers. I sent uh, this still to his home and he sent it back. I had gotten a hold of, of his address. It was a book of celebrity addresses. And uh, seems to me to be, uh, you know, pretty authentic. You don't know. There he is carrying one of his victims. <laughs> uh, nice of him to send the picture back. I, I'm, I'm usually leery about signatures like that through the mail because a lot of times they're secretarials. But I don't think at this point in his life, by the time I sent this, uh, poor old man was really getting a lot of offers for autographs, you know. Uh, but nevertheless, all right, uh, J Jason Evers, he plays uh, a brilliant surgeon. And he's engaged to the pretty uh, wife-to-be of his, fiance, played by Virginia Leith. I hope I'm saying the name right. And uh, she thought this film was going to be like a really uh, good move for her career. She only made one more film after this. And she really, really, absolutely didn't like this movie for obvious reasons I'll get into. In fact, it's been said that she hated this so much that she refused to come back to do vocal overdubs. And indeed, there are some moments in here where the talking head speaks and you hear the voice and it sounds like a different woman altogether. So you could you could bet that was true. All right. Can't blame her, really, when you get into it. So anyway, the brilliant surgeon and his fiance are going for a ride. And uh, for whatever reason, the doctor's driving like a maniac and going around curves very dangerously. You know what's going to happen, which is inevitable, and that's that there's a crash. Uh, you don't see the crash because of budgetary reasons. It's the way it's filmed. You have to presume it was, it was, it was a crash. And um, in this accident, I'm afraid that the, the pretty fiancé loses her head. Uh, you don't see anything, but what you do see is uh, Herb Evers... And with his jacket, scooping up an object that you assume is her head, he holds it dearly to his heart under the jacket as if it's a coveted football. And he runs like a quarterback all the way back to the laboratory, fighting the clock to preserve this head in a pan. And uh, a lot of fans have said that since the uh, woman in question here with uh, no head, her name is Jan, they call her Jan in the pan a lot of times, so... There you go. And there's a little still on the back from that. And you can see the poor actress had to like stick her head up through a pan through the whole movie. And boy, does she have a mouth on her. She can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. She is not happy about her dilemma. She does not like living as a head. 
I mean, who the hell wouldn't like to live just as a head? No, really? And she's pretty pissed at her, her fiancé husband-to-be that he's allowing her to live like this. But uh, after a while, he can't take it either, and he takes some some tape and just covers her mouth when she struggles to talk and can't remove the tape, which is kind of funny the way it's done. Uh, but he's got ideas of his own, the doc. You know, he decides to go around and for 48 hours or so, uh, keeping his head alive in the pan. And uh, while he's out, he's looking at beautiful women. He's going to look at, he's checking out hookers, or he's checking out burlesque dancers. Uh, he's checking out uh, beauty contest uh, contestants. Anybody he could find to find the perfect body, which which he can restore his beloved's head onto this new body. And he, he intends to find the right one, drug the person, and uh, they'll be the unwilling donor. And uh, it's a hoot. It really is uh, for those that go for this, this sort of thing. I mean, uh, those 50s women, they were something, I got to say. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of misogyny in this movie. There's some blood in this movie, a little bit black and white of the film. It's not in color. And I talk about Friday the 13th. They were talking about all old style black and white. Um, and while he's busy looking for a woman to replace his uh, fiance's body with, the head... Uh, is sitting in the pan and talking to somebody or something that is in a laboratory closet. There is a creature that's being kept in a closet. We never get to see it until the reveal at the very end of the film. That's a mutation. Obviously, something is wrong with this creature. It's a monster. And uh, near the end, we get to see some interesting uh, blood moments, which uh, are usually cut. So you have to see a copy of this film that's uncut. Most of them I think you're going to find now are uncut. There's actually a pristine copy on YouTube as of this time I'm making this video. It looks I, it looks beautiful. It's better than the copy I have. My copy is a DVD from Synapse uh, from 2000. So this is like 22 years old. And there's been a better one that I don't have. It, it goes for a pretty penny now as of this moment on Blu-ray. I think from Shout Factory, it's out of print. Uh, but this does restore all the extra scenes, at least in it. Uh, the film, you know, it, it's fun. It goes on a little too long. It's something like 85 minutes. It could have benefited from being 75 minutes. There's a little bit of chit-chat in here that kind of slows things down a bit and could have been a little tighter. But what do you want from a sleaze fest? And that's what this is. Now, this is not for everybody. You can tell by the way I'm describing it. But if you like these kind of movies, you're going to have a... A great time, or should with this, has become a cult classic of sorts. On a scale of one to four stars, I can't give it a good rating, I mean, as a movie and such, but it's tough. I give it two out of four stars, though, uh, which is, you know, average. Uh, it's it's worth watching if you like this kind of thing. I think you'll you'll enjoy it and have some, some kicks out of it. Um, but, you know, it's funny. If I was going to rate this on the sleazometer or the cheesy factor... It could be three and a half stars, you know. It depends how you want to view something. Yeah, so this is really a loads of fun. Uh, as I say, not the greatest thing since sliced bread, but uh, it's worth seeing. Uh, later on, uh, there was a film called Reanimator came out, which was another severed head kind of movie that's much more popular and much more liked, I think. But yeah, this is this is a, a cult film that's worth the watch if you like garbage. Okay, all right. Thanks, everybody.